Okay. 12 part series. We're going to work on the very first part, the pre-mate. So remember in these videos, I do put some notes together. That's notes for three, three parts. So it's really kind of a, not really set up in my mind exactly what I'm going to talk about. So I may jump and change around a little bit. Just bear with me if I do that. Okay. So, so the first thing is, is, is my dog in heat? When would you expect her to be in heat? And how old is she will give you an idea about when that might happen. So dogs that are sub six months old, they don't typically have heats. Their first heats typically start something between as early as seven weeks and as late as a year and a half. And what do we mean by heat? We mean that the dog has gone a physical change in the dog where it is capable of being bred by a male. Um, and the signs of this are typically, but are not always, maybe a little bit change in behavior a few days prior to the actual heat starting. The actual heat typically is, if we count day one, is the day that you see first spots of blood. So that might be on some bedding that she's been sleeping on. If you know that she's in preheat, you might have some diaper on her and see in her diaper. You might see some blood, blood spots on the ground. That all counts as day one. That's a very important point. We want to try and nail that down reasonably well, certainly within 24 hours of when we believe day one is, because everything kind of starts falling together after day one. So some dogs are very clean and they kind of constantly licking themselves, or maybe they're with other dogs and those dogs are cleaning each other up. So you might miss uh, the blood. Some dogs bleed a lot. It looks like a murder scene. It's pretty obvious what's going on. Some dogs don't bleed very much. Some dogs, vulvas get very big and swollen. Quite obvious that something's going on. Some dogs, very small vulvas that don't hardly change in size. So you can see here that there's quite a bit of variability. But for the norm, it's normally pretty obvious. And I'd say in 90% of cases, it's pretty obvious that your dog is in heat. So. You know, if you're waiting for this to happen, don't get overly concerned if things haven't happened this week. If it didn't happen in seven weeks, that, in seven months, that's fine. Don't start pushing this. Just pay attention. You're not breeding a dog for the first year anyway. Well, in my, my advice anyway. Um, a, a good cursor, precursor is changes of behavior, other dogs sniffing on other dogs, this dog showing more interest in other dogs. That's a typical kind of precursor to the fact that dogs are going to go into heat. Um, all right, so young dogs, dogs that are less than a year old, we don't advise you breed those dogs. Uh, so the question is, when should you breed a dog? Well, most dogs, they've had their first heat before they're a year old. And so typically you are talking about a second heat. Um, some people want to go further along and they don't want to breed their dog until the dog's a year and a half or two years old. And their argument is, is probably the dog's not full maturity. But I can tell you this, over 20 years of breeding dogs, I have bred lots and lots and lots of dogs that are in that one, one year to 14 month region, and I've not had problems doing that. The biggest problem with younger dogs is just physically getting them pregnant. Their heats have not really smoothed out yet. They tend to be a bit erratic, and they can have things called split heats. So it is quite common that when you do your first breeding at a year old, so 14 months old, that you may, you know, you've got about a 50% chance of being successful. It runs up to much higher odds as the dog gets older, a year and a half, two years old, you're probably approaching, you know, 80% of pregnancies uh, end up, six, you know, dogs get, get pregnant. Um, but there's a lot of things that determine that, timing, quality of the star, technique for the, for the uh, mating. Now, all those things obviously factor into this as well. All right. So we talked about a normal progression. Let's talk about a split heat. Uh, a split heat is a dog that goes into heat, starts to produce blood, uh, shows all the signs that the heat is developing nicely and then the whole thing kind of quiets down. You may not see any blood, it might have gone clear and you're way early, you're like six or seven days into this. And the dog just kind of doesn't show any signs of being in the heat anymore. And what happens in those situations is typically either it is a false heat, it's a very young dog, first heat, and it really didn't get going properly, it just stops and the next heat comes about six months later, or the whole thing starts back up again, the whole heat engine gets rolling again, and in you know a few days to a week later, the dog's getting back into being into heat. So let's just look a little bit at, at the heat cycle itself. So, and those of you who've been following my videos have seen me draw this graph many, 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 many times. 
So what we've got on this y-axis is progesterone. This is progesterone. And you have to measure this with um, uh, a blood test. You, you can't, you know, you have to do a blood test. There are all kinds of things you'll see out there that people are, you know, trying to sell you that are pads that you put on their back end. And there's a thing called a Draminsky, which is a wand that you put up in the dog with a digital display on it. Not a fan of any of this stuff. Uh, the, the standard is to do a blood test and a progest get a progesterone level. That is the best way to do this. Okay, so this is, we're going to count this as day one. That is first signs of blood. So this, before this, we may have seen some swelling. A couple of days beforehand, may have seen change in behavior. Dog may be more interested in other dogs and sniffing on them and that kind of stuff. But that's day one. All right, so how do you measure progesterone? Well, it depends on where you are. In the United States, with an IDEX, which is a typically a machine that you see a lot of, um, I think it's 2E, that's your IDEX. Uh, I, think it's, I think it's that. No, it's not, it's two X's. Well, I made a big mess. Let me just get rid of that. Sometimes I think I'm dyslexic. IDEX, that's how you spell it. IDEX, I-D-E-X-X. -X. That's what most dogs have. They have, so, that, this is the kind of standard, and on an IDEX machine, we're looking for a level of five as being ovulation. And we're just going to go up here and give you some numbers. And what you will see is that most dogs will reach a level of five about day uh, nine. That's about day nine. And so it's a, typically it's a fairly slow increase in progesterone level for the first five days, less than one. And then it kind of goes about one point a day until it gets to a level of five. Then it takes a pretty dramatic jump. It goes to eight. So this is uh, day 11. It's 11 and that's 13. We're going to put those in. I've got my graph compressed a little bit. In fact, it should be a little bit closer together, and that's going to matter because you'll see the slope of the graph. So let's just get that right. If that's 11, that's going to be 11, and that's going to be 13. All right, so what you're going to see is that you can see here that it takes a fairly dramatic jump There's kind of a knee here. This is the kind of the important part here. This is ovulation, and it then almost doubles every day they're out and it goes up to a very high number that might be well above 20 for the duration of a pregnancy, regardless of whether the dog was bred or not. Okay, so, so um, we want to get a vet visit done and we want to find out when the dog's ovulating or at least when this dog is at something around a 30 or 50, because this is when we're going to do an AI or natural breeding. And then we want to know when it's above a 20, because this is when we're going to do a TCI or a surgical. So these numbers matter a lot. Uh, and I've got videos on uh, surgical. I've got uh, videos specifically about this in some great detail. Um, so when you start testing, about here, about day six. About day six is when you want to do your first test. Now there's other things you can do here. And by the way, while I'm talking about this, IDEX machine, this is in nanograms per milliliter. If you're in Europe, it'll be nanograms per mole. And you'll have to multiply these numbers by 3.18. So a number that was a dog that was at a 20 on nanograms per mole would read about 64. So pay attention to the fact that uh, it depends on how this is being given to you as to what the numbers mean. If you're on a fine care machine, which is the machine that I sell, the Wonfo fine care machine, these numbers will be slightly higher. Where this was a five, it'll be more like a seven on a fine care machine. Where you're breeding on a 15, you're more likely to be around a 20 on the fine care machine. So fine care machine, slightly higher numbers. If you are on a mini vitus, which is a fairly popular machine in, in vets' offices, mini vitus. A mini vitus is about two times higher. It's dramatically higher, especially when you start getting up to these levels right here. So a dog that's going to be bred on a mini vitus is going to be bred something around 28, where it would have been a 50 in an IDEX. Dramatically different. Okay. Um, so... There are other ways to do this. You can go to the doc, get a blood test done. You can do it yourself. You can buy our fine care machine, which is what I recommend that you do, especially if you're gonna do much of this. Uh, you can go buy the target test from uh, www.target.com. 
target.com. I think it's targettest.com actually. It may be target test. Yeah, I have to go look at the see. Anyway, you can buy your own little kit there. It's about 145 bucks for 12 tests. It's nowhere near as good as progesterone test, but it's much better than trying to do this just simply by basing this off behavior. Um, okay. Um, let's see here. When should you start the test about day six? What are you looking for? You're looking for a number that's around 15. If you're doing it on IDEX and it's nanograms per, per, per milliliter. Uh, let's talk now about uh, the behavior of the dog and what you'd expect to see in terms of behavior as we move along this graph. Okay, so how long will a blood discharge go on for? Well, the answer is, is 21 days. You could see blood for that entire time. So you could get a bloody discharge that entire time. But most dogs, and I say most, 80% of them, will start to show a definite lightening of color around ovulation day nine. So this is ovulation. And about that time, you'd expect to see the dog's color. If you take a napkin, put it on its back end, and look at it every day, take a picture of it, it will go from being very, very red to a pinky color, to more of a vanilla or clearer color as you get closer and closer and closer to the day that the dog should be bred. It's a pretty good indicator. It's certainly not as good as a progesterone test, but it's much better than doing nothing. What can you expect behavior-wise in this dog? Well, here the dog is maybe going to show interest in other dogs. Uh, it may be sniffing on other dogs. It may be flirtatious. But if a male dog tries to mount your dog, you'd expect your dog to object to that quite substantially. It'll turn around, it may bark at them, walk away, sit down. This is not what we want yet. This is not the behavior for a dog that's ready. What we're looking for is a dog that will be in what we call standing heat. Standing heat. And that's going to happen around day 11, typically. Standing heat is an indication that your dog really is to the point where it needs to be bred pretty soon. Standing heat is a dog that will stand there and allow another dog to sniff on its back end, and it will do what's called tail flagging. Dogs like Frenchies with small tails, it might be hard to see this, but you'll still see the dog has moved his tail off to the side. It's basically exposing its vulva, and it says, here I am, come get me. A dog that walks away, turns around, growls, snips at the dog, it's a dog that's not ready, or you're way on out past this other end over here. A dog that has a pink to clear discharge, that's very receptive, that will stand there, is a dog that's ready to be bred and it will allow another male dog to get up on their back. Now, you may want to intervene because you may be testing with another dog that's not the dog you want to breed to. You may be um, using a stud dog or another dog just to give you an idea whether you're in the right place. So another way that you can do this is vaginal cytology. Vaginal cytology, uh, vaginal uh, psychology. It's not cytology, it's cytology. This is, this is where you take a Q-tip, you stick it up the dog's vulva, uh, so it kind of gets red on the end. You then take a slide, you roll the uh, um, Q-tip out on a slide, you stain it, look under a microscope, and you're looking for differentiation between two different states, where it looks like fried eggs with definite nucleuses in them, to where it looks like cornflakes, which is called cornification, with no nucleuses in them. And this transition, this is 100% cornified, and this is uh, not cornified at all. A dog that is ready to be bred should show 100% cornification. Uh, I'm not, let me see if I can see it on the, on the, you can see that on the screen okay. And you can just about see it, it's about gone off. So we'll just move this over for you, sorry about that. So just to reiterate here. Oh, not true, wrong way. Dog that's not ready looks like fried eggs. Smooth red edges, red, definite di uh, nucleus in the middle versus irregular edges, and they look more like cornflakes with no center in the middle of it. 100% cornified, not cornified, time to breed, not ready yet. Uh, not the best way of doing things. I used to do this a lot. Uh, it's certainly a, give you a rough idea of where you are. If you've got nothing other way of doing it, that's fine, but certainly it does not substitute for a progesterone test. What you'll be thinking here is, oh look, this is dirt cheap, I can do this. You can but it's not as good as a progesterone test. And getting the timing right is fundamental towards getting a decent litter. What's the window of opportunity? Maybe a day or so 
around this two day window, three day window. So most dogs, you know, the window of opportunity is think between day 10 and day 14, that's about it. Not a very broad window. If you start going either side of that, you're gonna get small or no litter at all. So it's pretty important to get this right. It's fundamental to the whole thing. Um, golly, you're taking up quite a lot of your time here. I think uh, that has covered uh, everything uh, that I wanna talk about here. I'm gonna do a part 1A where we're gonna talk about choice of studs because we have, don't have time to talk about this here, but that's gonna be the next part of this video. Thanks. Hey, thanks for watching the, the video. Uh, I really appreciate people who subscribe to me. It helps me, encourage me to do more of these videos. But do remember, disclaimer here, I am not a vet. I'm not a licensed medical professional. I'm purely a person who's been breeding dogs for the last couple of decades. Any information that you got from this video, use at your own risk. There's nothing implied here. And certainly this is, should not be used as a substitute for advice from your veterinarian or your medical professional. I hope you enjoyed the video. Come back for more of them. Bye. Thank you.